Hello, I'm Chuck Phillip, and welcome to another edition of Southern Home Talk. I got this letter in the mail a few days ago, and normally I don't open junk mail. I usually just chuck it straight to the garbage. But I'm kind of sort of glad I opened this one. And I was actually laughing when I read this thing. You know, I says, man, you know, I can't believe. I wonder how many people are going to do this. And I got to thinking, well, there might be quite a few people that will do it because... You know, if you're not a plumber like I was, well, you know, you might not know and it might foresee this as a big problem or a potential issue. You, maybe your neighbor's pipe busted and they had to pay a lot of money to have it replaced. Well, I'm going to tell you as a plumber, it wasn't that often I had to make service calls on the main water service coming from the meter to the home. I mean, I had to do some but most of all my repair work was done on the inside of the house. Now this is subjective because a lot of this depends on how well your water service line was installed, what type of materials did they use. I mean there's some variables that go along with that but if you want to, you can see in this photograph here, I kind of know the story behind this one. You know this was a house that was on a concrete slab and they couldn't find the leak and so they decided to replace the the water all the way back to the meter and that's what they did in this case and the way you can discover if you think you have a leak is to open up your water meter and look at the dial make sure everything in the house is off and if it, you can see these numbers turning or the dial spinning it tells you you might have a leak somewhere that's a kind of a good way to determine that now you can also go to the water department too and sometimes they have uh, good records where they can tell you they well they may suspect there could be a problem but let's look at this other photograph about the types of pipes that you're likely to have in your system now it's going to depend a lot on when your home was built so that top one up there is copper and that was used pretty extensively uh, in the 60s and 70s and 80s really and then it, about mid 80s it started trans sending to PVC pipe, that's what I use, that's those two pipes at the very bottom, the white pipes, and, but I, I have found where I did one repair, it, it had PVC, but it wasn't scheduled 40, it was scheduled 20, so it was real thin pipe, and that's why it failed over time, they, they shouldn't allow that, they, I wish they didn't even make scheduled 20 PVC, but it's cheaper, and that's what they did, now, but if it's scheduled 40 PVC, like you see here, both, they got both one, and, one inch and three quarter, they got larger sizes as well. Uh, I've never encountered any problem with the pipe itself being buried underground, especially if it was buried deep enough, because if it's just right under the surface, it can get damaged by being run over, or it can even freeze if it's not too far down. It all depends on where you live. Uh, the, Probably the weakest point of PVC is at the connection. That's that male adapter that you see there is threaded. If that's not threaded correctly, uh, that's usually where I found the problems. And you have to have a certain feel for this because if you over tighten these, it'll create a hairline crack into the fitting there and over time it will break. But if it's not tightened enough, it'll leak that way or if you don't use the right pipe compound and so that's why it's important to have someone that really knows what they're doing when they install your water service pipe now it's possible that you could have one of these two in the middle the, the gray one hopefully you don't have that uh, that's polybutylene but you know I actually installed a lot of that stuff back in the 80s and some 90s and I never had any callbacks on any of the, the stuff I re installed and also this bottom pipe the red one is PEX now there's been some brands of PEX that's been recalled and been deemed effective and that's the same thing with this polybutylene too uh, that's been recalled as well and been classified as being de defective in some of the articles I've seen but you know usually when I did a home inspection I saw that in there if I didn't see a whole lot of repairs in it then I uh, I kind of sort of assumed that uh, this particular batch of pipe didn't have uh, any problems or potentially didn't. But also the fittings were an issue as well for both the PEX and the polybutylene. 
and can still be to this day depending if it was installed correctly. A lot of this has to do with just installation and how well this material was installed to begin with. So if you're looking in this next photograph if your house was built in the 50s, 40s, and maybe even some early 60s where they were using galvanized pipe as the main water supply system in the home and used it sometimes uh, for the main water service line going to the meter and that's a potential issue for houses even built all the way up to the 80s uh, while they, uh, they were using galvanized pipe going back to the meter yeah, uh, just to have a more rigid type of pipe going to it but what happens with this pipe is as it more water gets run through it it starts getting uh, clogged up I mean that's a, it's not a good idea to use galvanized pipe it, you, you may see it in your home but just know if it's there hopefully it's just what it's intended for and that's the natural gas service now here's a good example of corrosion inside a pipe this is actually copper and so depending on what location you're in uh, it's possible that certain sediments inside the water system or minerals can create this type of issue here but probably the biggest problem your plumbing system faces that can affect your entire plumbing system is a tanked water heater and that's why when it comes time to replacing these guys I recommend you get away from a tanked water heater and go to a tankless and what the biggest problem is is you see that tank up there on the right it's not installed correctly either but let's just go to this you can see where I'm measuring the air pressure on this tank. It has a bladder in there, and that pressure should match inside this tank what the incoming water pressure is. So generally your water pressure should be anywhere between 45 and 55 PSI. It can be a little bit higher than that, and that's usually okay. And so what happens is, is this bladder will fail, and the top part of this tank will, will have water in it. So when I put this valve up here to, to test it uh, water comes spewing out and it tells me the tank is bad or there's no air in it in this case where they just simply failed to put the air in and so pretty much have a useless system when that happens and also know I'm finding that these expansion tanks usually don't have a service life of a few years and so you can see where I measured almost 120 psi pressure on this home but believe it or not, I've actually tested pressures over 150. I wish I'd taken a picture of that. And that's caused from the lack of having an expansion tank on your water heater. It can really cause big problems. It can. And so what's happened is, you say, well, why does that happen? Because I've never had to have one of those ever before. Well, when they were installing the water service in the neighborhoods, it also depends on how old your neighborhood is too, but that's changed too because they're starting to put these in these check valves at the street and so that's what you're looking at uh, most water meters now have this check valve installed and so it will not allow water to come back to the street side of the system and it's done to protect the water supply and so you look at this you may see these things on your hose bibs around the home and that's also an anti-siphon device, uh, also called a backflow preventer. And you'll probably find it on your hose bibs and maybe on the washing machine connections. And what that's there for is to prevent the water from siphoning back into the water service and going out to the city service. And I remember when I went to plumbing school, I uh, spent almost a whole day on this darn thing, you know, about the proper application of these backflow preventers. You see there's a set screw there that's supposed to be broke off up to where you can't remove it well you know us is this is kind of nut nutty to me because why don't they just put a check valve at the meter and be done with it because now you're depending on the homeowner when they go to replace their uh, hose bibs to put one of these back on it and so eventually most municipalities have caught on and they now have a check valve out the street and if they don't have one they're probably soon going to have one on it and so that's not going to allow any pressure to go back to their side and that's why all that high pressure will build on your plumbing system inside the home. Now this is a different type of relief system which is different from the temperature pressure and relief valve on your water heater and some people say well why do I need to buy an expansion tank or this type of expansion device 
because I have a TPV valve on it already. Well, that valve is not designed to open and close all the time. It's designed to only open in an emergency. And usually, if you was to go and test it, there's a possibility you won't be able to shut it back off because they, they're just not designed to be open and closed like that. So if you have a tanked water heater, you should have an expansion device on it like this or an expansion tank that's in, properly installed. Now, uh, another issue with water heaters was, of course, installation there again, where they didn't have dielectric unions uh, where the copper pipe makes the connection to the tank. And what can happen is when you have two dissimilar metals uh, making contact with one another, uh, it will start corroding the copper pipe. It, it, it'll be real apparent at the connection of the water heater, but what really flips people out is that this can corrode pipe in distant locations throughout the home, not just at the water heater. And so that's what a dielectric union looks like. It breaks that copper to steel connection to prevent that from happening. Of course, you can pause this video if you want to look, look at that closer. Now, here we go again with a, another plumber repair inside the home. And this is where copper pipe had to be replaced in a distant location because it was not installed correctly at the water heater, not having that dielectric union. And so, you know, basically, if you have a tanked water heater, I recommend that when it comes time to replace it, that you replace it with a tankless system that really does eliminate a lot of problems. And another thing too when I was doing inspections is these old water heaters, they just seemed to last forever. And I mean they were just really built good back then, but they're not built so well anymore. They they really have gone to thinner tanks and and generally if you want to know how long your tank water heater is going to last it's pretty much however long the warranty is on it. And, and they may or may not even cover the warranty on it because they may have stipulations on their warranty uh, that it be installed by uh, a qualified plumber, or a licensed plumber, and they may evaluate how it was installed. And if it wasn't installed correctly, they will blame the plumber and not themselves. And so just know that there's a lot of controversy around these warranties for for water heaters, and that's with any kind of product. That's really how that works. Now, there's even been recalls on some of these water heaters, and that's why it's pretty important to maybe check this every so often, you know, about your appliances, see if there's recalls on them. And the biggest problem of all is what happens, you'll go to Home Depot or Lowe's, and I guess buy a water heater, but not register the warranty. And this is an excuse for them not to have to do anything so it's really important that you register that warranty. So, you know, it says a typical hot water heater usually lasts uh, five or six years. And I would say that's generally true uh, because of the thinner tanks that they're putting in them now. But like I said, if you have a, don't have an expansion device on your water heater, that can cause that to fail. Actually, uh, really spectacular failure where it can just blow up. Now that's what a tankless water heater looks like and they generally have a service life of around 20 years which is pretty good uh, but they do require some maintenance but that's what I recommend you go to and I only recommend the gas models of those. Now if all you have is electric then I recommend a heat pump uh, style tank water heater but they usually have a longer warranty. And so it's just a matter of time before you're going to have a plumbing failure in your home. It's just what it is. All plumbing systems have a service life and it's going to fail at some point. But the main thing is you should be prepared when that happens and have a secondary main ball cutoff valve in addition to this cutoff valve at the street so you can quickly turn this water off. This is going to be the one point in this whole video you're going to wish you took my advice on because it's going to fail in your home at some point. Now, another problem too, is so I say, well, I'm not going to worry about the secondary cutoff. I've got a water meter out in the front yard. I'll just cut it off there. But th this is one of those things that it kind of gets forgotten about because the water meter uh, doesn't have to be read anymore by the water department. And so what happens, they, they get covered up and over time you can't find them. And not only that, but they get covered with soil so we have to dig it out to get to the valve. 
And in the meantime, you got an enormous amount of water pouring into your home. You're really going to be in a panic when this happens. And so you can see this wire where it goes to this thing. They just re electronically, wirelessly read the meters. They don't have to get out of the truck and open up the, the lid. So they just get filled up with dirt, just like you see there. But, you know, if you don't have this secondary main cutoff valve, it's critically important. Uh, that you have a water meter key like this. You can get an Ace Hardware, Home Depot, and keep your water meter box cleared out because when you want to sh shut the valve off, you're going to be want to do it quick. Now, generally, the water company is only responsible for the meter and anything on their side of the meter. So, you know, if you have a, a leak at the connection, uh, to the meter, it's not likely they're going to fix you. You're going to have to call a plumber. Now, this is a good time of the year. We're in the fall, we're in November, so we're starting to get some cooler days. And this is the time to start doing things in the attic more than just this. I'm trying to keep this video short. But this was an issue I found doing home inspections where uh, PEX comes up into the attic and it's quite common for it to do that in newer homes. And this should be insulated. And some people say, well, why, why should it be It's like a PEX should be uh, freeze resistant. Well, it is, but look at the light coming through. The, but that's the soffit vent coming up there. Uh, PEX is extremely vulnerable to UV light and even ambient UV light. And so what's going to happen over time is this UV light is going to degrade this plastic and then the freeze is going to come and it's going to bust it. But just know that PETS can still freeze. It still should be insulated regardless. Now, this is a type of pipe insulation that I use, but I figured I'd throw this little tip in. Uh, when I go yard sale and I look for these pool noodles, and usually I can get them pretty cheap. I think I got a whole bundle of these for like $3, and it was a bunch of them. And so what I'm doing is I'm splitting this pipe long ways. You've got to be careful doing this. You cut yourself. Now, using a serrated knife, that seems to work the best. And that's basically all pipe insulation is. And I'd recommend that you insulate your pipes, uh, any, especially any plastic pipe that's, that's exposed to sunlight. Or if it's PVC pipe, it'll, it'll bust in for sure. So it really should be insulated. Now, the most vulnerable point on the outside of your home is your hose bibs. And so they make these insulated boxes for that. And so I recommend you put those on in the fall. This is the best time of the year to, to get this foam insulation, any kind of insulation, because what happens is, as the news report goes out, we've got a, a winter blast coming. It's going to get down to five degrees. And what happens? Everybody runs uh, to the hardware stores and wipes out their supplies of it. And so this is why you should do this now. Now, air conditioning, uh, that's something you want to register the warranty on as well. For sure you want to register it for that. And also want to keep it serviced twice a year. And so this would be a good time to have your air conditioner serviced for the winter months. But I, my theory is, instead of buying extended warranties for air conditioners and all other kinds of appliances, is to have a backup system of everything. So I have two air conditioners as a result. So if my central system goes down, it's not an immediately crisis that I have to go do something about that. This is a mini split system and they're more efficient too. But if you don't want to put in a mini split, I know this is kind of pricey. You can get these cheaper though, but I don't recommend getting the cheaper ones. Uh, this Whitnier uh, unit is extremely good. It's also very efficient of all the ones that are out there. And plus it's a heater too, so it'll work both ways. And this is just good to have as a backup system in case your HVA system goes out, which is going to do. And usually it's going to go out at a time where you really don't want it going out, like over Christmas or 4th of July holiday. And it's a crisis. You have to get someone out there to fix it. And they're going to, you're going to be paying a lot of money for that service call. Well, if you have one of these, it'll lessen the urgency to have that repaired and you can actually get quotes to have it done uh, possibly cheaper. The only thing I've ever taken out any kind of extended warranties on 
has been computers and laptops, especially if I've paid over $1,000 for them. Uh, I think it may be kind of worth it to do it in that respect, and I still would back check how good that warranty is. Like I say, it's still subjective either way. I mean, a warranty is only as good until you try to claim on it. And that's the same with insurance. You never know how good your warranty or insurance is going to be until you go to file a claim, and that's when you know. But you'll see that, like with these extended car warranties, I would never do any of those. And that's something these dealerships really push hard for, is these extended warranties. And I'm sure you've probably been getting these calls too, like everyone else. I mean, it's, and that tells you the fact that there's so many of these spoof calls and uh, telemarketing calls going out there that there's a lot of people that are vulnerable uh, to this. Uh, fear can get you to do things you ordinarily would not do, and that's what they do. They, the sky's going to fall unless you have this warrant to protect. You could be out thousands of dollars unless you do this, and and that's why it's important. Uh, to be self-informed and to really take the time to do your own research more than anything instead of going by what somebody tells you. Now, I'm glad I ran across this. Uh, I got this this morning and this one will go ahead and read this to you. How much does it cost to put in a water line? So this for the entire water main replacement cost the amount ranges from fifteen hundred to twelve thousand the national average reported to be around 3700 for a 25 foot long main water line made of galvanized steel using a trenchless installation which is the most popular choice of installation material and method for water lines that's patently false and that's this is the reason why you should look at multiple sources on this and it's a good thing I already knew this flat out that galvanized is the worst uh, possible product that you can use in your water service. In fact, it's against code in many locations to use it. And so I'm glad I put this in there. I'm glad I found it myself. But I've always done that, especially when I'm not sure about something. I will, I'll look at as many different sources as I can in order to come up with an informed decision on what the best thing to do. So. But there's another girl out there uh, that's, I'm going to put the, uh, the link in this, uh, underneath the description here of how to, to get to this channel and subscribe to it. Uh, she's called The Budget Girl. Uh, she's got some pretty informative videos on how to save money. And she also talks about home warranties. And those are real subjective as well. I had a lot of my clients as a home inspector uh, ask about should I get a home and uh, warranty and what was one of the best ones well even if there's good ones out there you don't know how long they're going to stay good that's just the thing that's why I don't do these extended warranties on anything because you know it's just subjective whether or not they're going to pay uh, if the best thing and I'm just going to shorten it up to this the best thing you can do is to do your own homework and to have a backup system of the most critical components of your home and that's having two air conditioning units, having two water heaters, and that way, if there is a problem, it's not an immediate crisis to have a service tech to come out there and deal with it. You can take your time and have quotes done uh, to have that service performed, but also know this too, on this ending note, never pay any upfront money to any contractor, ever, and if they Required, move on to the next contractor. Move on. I hope this has been informative. Most of all, I hope it saves you money. And thanks for watching, guys. Take care.